we glory in His perfect work. His work is perfect. Let's, let's read some scripture together today as the Lord speaks to us. He says, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. They're, they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, listen to this, church. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. And I'm going to read one more verse in 16 of that same chapter, if you'll go on down. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So, Father in heaven, as we stand here in, a, in your presence in a sanctuary, we've always had a sanctuary, a place together. Lord, we ask that you would allow your word to do its perfect work in our life. And even when we don't even see it and we don't even understand the word and how it's working in our life, I pray, Lord, that the seeds that have been planted would, would come forth and that there would be much fruit from our branches. Lord, you are, you love fruit. <laughs> Lord, I, I've never seen in the scriptures where you like meat. I don't know if you're a vegetarian, but I know you love fruit. Souls, when we work for you and when we long for you, God, that is fruit that you just you just consume. God, I pray right now as we move forth as a church that we would uh, we would receive supernatural joy. Last month's been a lot of weeping, a lot of unforeseen things. But God, in the midst of that, weeping may endure for a night. Say this church, but joy comes in the morning. God, we give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. And just turn around and say hey to somebody. We might be social distancing and that sort of thing, but we can still say hey. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we're not going to let this paralyze us for sure. Amen. Spiritually. You know... I was thinking about this message all week, been going to this scripture all week, and it was only till really yesterday that he said, okay, preach this scripture and this word, and it was confirmed in the prayer room a while ago when the instrumental um, song was playing, Let It Rain, and uh, I was thinking about the last month since that Saturday and that first phone call came, and it's just been one thing right after another. You know, in those kind of seasons and in those kind of time frames, and you may be here, you, you may have a lot of questions. And as I was praying about this, I wanted to just ask you, have you been asking a lot of questions about the Lord? You know, it, in our relationship and in this life that we live for Jesus, it's not an easy, not an easy walk. 
Um, as we grow in the Lord and as we walk with Jesus every day, we have questions. You know, you feel the sometimes in life you feel depleted and maybe even discouraged. And of course, when you lose a saint, someone like Miss Carol, you feel extremely sad. Um, if you are in the field laboring, ministering, many. Many times you, just like at work, if you work a 10-hour day, you don't, you don't end the day like you started the day. You are tired and weary. And maybe in this congregation, uh, someone may even feel lonely. But in those questions that are formed, uh, I often... Sometimes after I pray, I feel like they go un they're unanswered. I walk away as though, why did this happen? Why are we in this situation? Why have we not been able to gather in 2020 for 14 Sundays out of the year and have to go virtually? What are you doing, God? Um, and then I ran up on a song by Dr. Tim Hill. That he wrote. Um, and I've been listening to it for the last 48 hours. And the song, really the whole gist of the song is, is that it's going to rain again. That the seed that you've planted, though it may be deep, and though you may not see it come, come up now, it's going to rain again. And that the stalk is going to bend with wheat. And that the vine is going to burst forth with grapes again. The grapes is going to burst forth with new wine in our lives. And I just wonder as I read this verse of scripture from Jesus, because these words are in red. He says, I am the true vine. I'm wondering if God is just allowing us to be um, to be wrapped in a special way with this true vine. I wonder if this is just a, another way for God to show us that, it, that it's going to rain again. And that uh, he is the true vine. And a vine means that well, it's, a vine's a plant, but in this metaphor, Jesus is saying he's the vine. A vine can go on the ground or it can go up and it wraps itself around something. And really, a vine has to grow on something for support. And through this, I want to encourage you to let God and Jesus be the true vine let him wrap around you and let him just show you his love yeah. as a vine. Now in this scripture, we know that the Father, the Bible says, is the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine, the Father is the vine dresser, and the vine dresser is the one who cultivates. He's the one that works his vineyard, the Father, through the Son, the vine, that supports us and wraps himself around us and in us during difficult times, is working in his vineyard. And then you have branches. The Bible says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Who do you think the branches are? That is us. A branch is a limb or a offshoot 
that comes from the main stem. He says that we are the branches that come off the vine. That God is the vine dresser, that Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And here goes what I know the Lord loves. What the Father is working the vineyard for. And that is fruit. Fruit is that edible part of the vegetable. It is that part that helps the helps uh, it grow and be the harvest. And I got this picture of Jesus being the vine, us being the branches, and off of us, fruit bearing fruit, souls, fruit working for the Lord, fruit um, praying. I pictured God in heaven just picking fruit and eating it and him enjoying it. The fruit. Now I am reminded that this is after Jesus tells us that he's going to manifest himself in us. And this is how he manifests himself in us. Is that we bear fruit. That we love him. That we keep his word so that this fruit can be produced in our life. You see, God is manifesting himself right now in a way like never before. Again, I, I don't back off the sermons that have been preached since this has all happened. I believe with all my heart that he is moving, that he is making a way. And that there is a harvest. There is fruit that God is preparing for his church. Amen. He also says in this scripture that if we love him and we keep his word and the father, we love him, that they will come to us. This is comforting, isn't it? They will come to us and make a home with us. Now isn't that an awesome thing? A home. Which is what God wants with us. Just like you have a home. Just like you have a residence where you live, which is a home where the family is, where you can be cared for. You have a home where you can rest. Jesus says, if you love me, I'll come. If you keep my commandments, I will come and I will make a home, our home. It will be called our home. I will live with you. I will care for you. I will provide this loving atmosphere, this, this presence of God's Spirit in your life because we will have a home. But the truth is, is that we have to ask ourselves questions like I started out with because we are curious people. Are we bearing fruit like God wants us to bear? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we witnessing? Are we praying? Are we worshiping? Are we giving the Lord Jesus the very best? Are we being the best branch that we can possibly be? Is there this fruit in our life that God himself can pick in heaven and, and eat of it? Because here goes the truth of it. If it is not producing fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that produces fruit, he prunes. Now, I find that striking because either way you go, you're going to get cut back. If he don't produce, he's going to 
cut you out, and if you do produce, he's going to prune you back. Which tells me that this is a hurtful, tough, not easy life. And brothers and sisters, I submit to you that we have had it too easy. We are just so blessed. We have had it too easy that we are, if we're not careful, our, we will not produce fruit. If we're not careful, we will be pulled away from the home that he's trying to make with us. We will cut off the vine that is trying to support us, which is Jesus, and we will unravel ourselves and we'll walk in this life and we won't bear fruit and we won't realize it because we'll think, well, I go to church. Well, I, I, I pay my tithes. I sing. I do all these things. I offer some talents. But where is the fruit in your life? Are you abiding in Him? Because that is so very important that we remain and continue and stay, which is what abiding means in the vine, in Jesus. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless you abide in me, in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. That's what God wants in our life. He wants much fruit. When we are geared, when we are focused, when we are abiding, when we are we are allowing God to manifest himself, when he is making his home with us, then what he is producing is much fruit. And when there is much fruit, the Father is glorified. Amen. But brothers and sisters, there's a pruning that has to take place. There's a cutting back that's going to happen. When the branches are not producing, he cuts them off. He piles them up. And like Jesus said in this I am a metaphor to us. He throws them in the fire and he starts all over and he creates something new. He, set, he, he plants new seeds and new t at new times. So for the appointed time, there can be a harvest for his glory. But here goes what I know. God is going to have fruit. There is no, I'm going to stand back and let somebody else do it. Brothers and sisters, God is wanting fruit bearing in our life. Amen. It glorifies Him. It makes Him happy. It makes he, he, I can see I can I can see Him up there eating a delicious apple, if you will allow. When He sees fruit in our life, He picks it out of our life, and it's delicious to Him, and it makes Him happy. When we're walking in His Word, when we're praying. Fruit is coming off the branch as it's attached to his son. And as there's a home and he's manifesting himself to us, it makes him happy. And then you, you read verse 16 where it says, I did not, or you did not choose me, but I chose you. Isn't that amazing? Of all the fruit he could have picked, you being a piece of fruit. He said, you did not choose me. I was looking down from heaven on my vineyard and I chose you. Amen. I anointed you. I called you. I saved you. You didn't save yourself. You didn't choose me. No, I looked down in, in my vineyard and I seen where you were and I picked you. Amen. And why did he choose us? He chose us for an appointed time. 
And I have appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. What is the purpose of the church? What is Jesus wanting to do in your life? Why did everybody run to Miss Carol? I tell you why. Because she had fruit. It wasn't really about the candy that kids ran to because one three-year-old said when they, when, we, when they sat that three-year-old down in this church, it wasn't about the candy. They said, I'm going to miss my hug. What was the difference? He could have said, I'm going to miss my gummies. The difference was, there was she was a branch and there was fruit in her life. And that, that is what they remembered in her life. And brothers and sisters, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to bear fruit. Amen. Much fruit. And he's appointed you and me and this church and this time for the harvest that he's wanting to bring into his kingdom. It says, and your fruit shall remain. Your fruit shall remain. That what I love this next piece of what Jesus says. That whatever you ask and desire, I will give to you. Hallelujah. That means that if we are a branch, fruit is being produced. We are working in his kingdom. We are residing and he is our residence. And the vine has wrapped around us to support us. Then he says, whatever you ask in my name, whatever you desire in your, in my, in your heart, I will give to you. I will give to you that you would love me. This is how this works. There are seasons for everything. And I want you to know that God wants me to tell you again today that it's going to rain again Amen. in your life. I looked up the word rain in the scriptures and I seen where rain Charles was talked about from the beginning to the end. Rain is drops of water that the atmosphere produces so that it can come and hit the earth and give it exactly what it needs. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that in due season it will rain again. Sooner or later, there's not going to be these social distancing measures that we're having to do. and We're not going to have to ask people to wear masks. Sooner or later, it's going to rain again. Sooner or later, you're going you're to start seeing the fruit from where the rain hits you and hits the rain, I'm talking about the rain. There's going to be a raining of the Spirit of God. Yeah. That's going to rain into your life if you will open up your hearts to Him. Yeah. Follow His Word. Let Him prune you. Let Him get those things out of you that don't need to be in there, that's not producing. And let the rain, the nutrients from heaven and His Spirit Rain into your life. Hallelujah. Jeremiah said it this way. They did not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God who gives rain, both the former and the latter rain, that in its season He reserves for us the appointed weeks of harvest. Jeremiah Whose, word, whose God's words were shut up in his bones, said that this is, that when the rain comes, the former and the latter rain, that there will be weeks of harvest. Weeping may endure for a night, but somebody help me preach in this early service this morning. 
Joy is going to come in the morning. He said that he saved us that our joy might be full. Brothers and sisters, there's a weeks of harvest that's coming. I don't understand why we're going through what we're going through, but I also don't understand why we can get what we need to build a new church in the, in the middle of a pandemic. I don't understand it all. Amen. I just know the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Amen. I know I've never seen the righteous forsaken and the seed bed and bread. Amen. Now I'm starting to preach right here. Amen. I know that my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, that every care that I have I can throw on him, and he's great and mighty and he can carry it all. I know that if we will allow the fruit to come off these branches, that he'll pick them and he'll eat them and he'll look down and he'll say, that is my son or daughter who I am well pleased. I know the Holy Ghost is real. I know the Spirit of God is moving. And I know God is, is still saving and he's on his throne. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It will rain again. Robert, it's like God going in the food line, walking through the fruit department saying, mmm, that looks good right there. I think I'll take that piece of fruit and I'll eat of it until I send my son Jesus to, to gather my church and, and just go have a big harvest. I believe that's what Jesus is doing right now. He said, you, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And for that, Lord, we are thankful this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then Jesus said some words in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount. He said when he was talking about his love and your enemies, he got through there talking about how you love those who uh, persecute you and all these different things. He says that, you'll, that you may be sons of, the, of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. Boy, Jesus was teaching us when he was preaching that, that sermon. Powerful, powerful lesson. Boy, I'm reminded in 2 Chronicles whenever Solomon had just got done dedicating the temple. I'm reminded how the Bible says that they called an assembly and they prayed. Now here goes something that I've I seen when I was looking at rain going through the Bible. When you wanted it to rain or you wanted it to stop rain, there's always prayer associated in the scriptures and in the word. I don't know how to say it, but can somebody just say, can I just say it? I, I wonder if there's a drought season that's going on and has been and God's shaking us up so we'll get back to praying like we should be praying. Listen to what 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 says. When I shut up heavens and there was no rain. Or command the locusts to devour the land. Or send a pestilence among my people. What? A pestilence? That's what this is. Send a pestilence. If my people who are called by my name will humble myself. After he shuts heaven and stops the rain. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, fast and pray. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Hey, we're just cruising on through the scriptures right here in the book of James. Listen to what James chapter 5 says. We always point out anoint with oil that he may heal the sick, but in that same passage of scripture, he says, therefore, be patient. Oh, my goodness. Be patient. Patience is a virtue. We were talking about patience, I believe, right before all this craziness started happening a month ago. And we were all shaking because we were having, we were talking about it in James right here. He says, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Then he goes on. He says Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Meaning 
Let me tell you about Elijah just a little bit. He was a man with questions. Who, was, who fought depression. Who was discouraged. Who was lonely. Who ran for his life. He said, James said he had a nature like us. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain for three and a half years. And then in verse 18, and then he said he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced fruit. Hallelujah. Pastor, what am I supposed to do if I really want this fruit to start coming off my branch? Has anybody seen a, a common theme in here? On the count of three, everybody yelled. I mean, I, it's kind of like me. The teacher would come up to me sometimes and says, I gave you the answer. You know, just, I gave you the answer already. What, what's the common theme? Prayer. Prayer. What we, if we want fruit in our life? That's common. That's a common thing. We pray. There's rain. There's fruit. Hosea. Let us know, Hosea said in 6.3. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like rain. Hallelujah. Boy, I, it's raining in my soul right now. There's a, there's a storm right now. Woo, I, I'm feeling like three. It's, it's like a rain cloud just hanging right there. Right there, just raining right there. He, he will come to us like rain. Like the latter in the former rain. And then he goes on in chapter 10 and he says, Sow for yourselves righteousness. Do what's right. Brothers and sisters, the days of us not doing what's right and God blinking it, I'm telling you, he's, he's cutting that mess out. He ain't blinking at it. He ain't blinking at it no more. I'm telling you, people that do right, I think that's part of the new season we're entering into. That's why there's so much craziness that's going on. Because people are not sowing righteousness, doing what's right. Let me tell you, young person, individual that's out there every decision that you have to make you will make another decision based on the last decision you just made and you just sowed a seed into your life you, you, you don't even realize it but when, when we make decisions we're sowing seeds and you have to sow for yourself what is right, what is good not what is wrong and what is evil and but you have to sow for yourself righteousness so you can reap in mercy. He says, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on us. Time to seek the Lord Amen. till he comes. Till he comes. He comes. Hosea said he'll come in like rain into our fields. And then the last verse is out of Psalms. Out of Psalms. 68 verses 8 through 9. Talking about the glory of God. Now, we're building a new facility i got to add this in here because I've been praying, God, don't let us build a new facility just to be building a new facility. Amen. Lord, don't make a way. Y'all hear this praying right here. Lord, I do not want to maintain a new facility just so we can say we have a new facility. Amen. Or so that we can just fill it with a bunch of people. I have told the Lord, shut the doors. Just like Elijah prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Brothers and sisters, I have said shut the doors until he finally at an appointed time opened the right door. 
Why do you say that, Pastor? Because if the glory of God is not there, then it is pointless. Amen. I'm telling you that we will build a church and if the glory of God is not there, we will have failed. Amen. If there is no glory offered for Him, or no glory coming from Him, then we will just have built a building full of people, but empty of His glory. Amen. I, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I shake like the earth in this Psalms right here. When I read it, that's what came to my heart. The Bible says the earth shook and the heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You, O oh God, provided from your goodness for the poor. You, O oh God, sent a plentiful rain whereby you confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Gosh, isn't that like right now? Weary, the Lord just rained it. He will rain. Again. When we pray, we get serious and we start seeking the Lord like Hosea said. When we start sowing for ourselves righteousness so that we can reap in mercy. When we understand that this is an appointed time. That this is an appointed time that we're living in. That each one of us or is a branch and that he's looking to pick fruit off of our branches so that he can be happy. I'm telling you, it'll start raining. When we're willing to offer up glory to him in weary times, when we're willing to get on our knees and pray and I know it sounds repetitive. I've been saying it for 20 years. I plan on saying it for 20 more if he allows me to keep doing it because I want to see rain in your life. Amen. I want to see fruit coming off your, your limbs and your branches. I, I, I want you to see it. I want you to see how good that you can taste and see how good godly, how good God really is. Amen. He's wanting to pour his spirit out in your life. He's more than just meeting a bill. More than just a house or a car. He's more than just a job or a raise. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a vine that wraps himself around you and grows into your life and supports you so that you can bear much fruit for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, bless him, baby. <laughs> and that's what, God, that's what matters to God. That's what matters to him. The fruit. The fruit. Are you in a drought? Oh, man. I'm telling you, it's easy to feel like there's no rain. And worry starts coming in, Sister Peg. Worry. Anger. Anger, loneliness starts seeping in and it start, starts taking the moisture of God's spirit out of your life. Drought starts happening. I'm telling you, God's raining from heaven right now. much fruit. He wants you to understand that He chose you, that He loved you, that He wants you to keep His commandments. He wants you to worship Him. He wants you to pray to Him. He wants you to give Him glory so that He can rain His glory back down on you. He wants you to draw close to Him so that He can draw close to you. He, 
That's how it works, church. He wants us to reach out. He wants us to invite people into his presence. And he wants you to tell them about at work about who he is and what he's done for you and how he saved you and how he has loved you and how he has been a, a true vine. Because you see, that word true vine, he put true vine in there because there's a lot of fake vines in there. And there's a lot of weeds in life. And he said, I'm the true vine. I want you to know that when, when I wrap around you, I support you in a way where you can bear much fruit in your life. I'm not a fake vine. I don't grow into your life and, and I just take the breath out of you and choke you. Oh no, I'm the true vine. I'm the true vine and branches come off of me and fruit that you can eat that my Father glories in is produced in your life. Oh, I'm telling you, there's many different vines out there, church. There's many different, they'll try to grow into your life and you will think they're one thing and there'll be another thing. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you got to grow into the true vine. you got to let Him support you. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. And let prayer be your life. Let it be your life. Pray without ceasing. Pray in the Spirit. Sing in the Spirit. Sing prayers to Him. Sing whatever comes from your heart. That, my friend, is the method. Hallelujah. Would you stand and worship with Mandy and Abby and this praise team and this band? Would you give glory back to God? Would you clap?